it's like you read the wrong book and then potentially there's a year of your life <laughs> so i have a question yeah why are 90 percent of business books useless great question johnny thanks I released a video recently called How I Read 30 Books a Year While Working Full-Time as a, as a Doctor and so on. And actually now I'm trending towards less and less. And obviously the title is a very clickbaity, 30 books a year sounds like a lot. So, you know, if you say how I read five books a year, no one's going to care. But I really <laughs> think that this whole, like, it's, it's the same as like how, how to build a seven-figure, eight-figure, nine-figure fitness business. It's like you have to just go to the lowest common denominator and people just saying outlandish numbers and anyone who says i read 100 books a year is wasting their time they are just consuming information i'm not saying that it's not possible to do that like you can certainly bash through that many books but if each book is somebody's life work and you're just going right onto the next one onto the next one it's a complete like i i know that i'm preaching to the choir here johnny because like yeah you're a man who reads a page of a book stops closes the book and just does it for a year i don't think i can't remember the last book i read i just don't read the books anymore why Why are they useless um so business coaching books specifically i think they are useless because you're often better off experimenting yourself and finding the solution yourself than you are like reading a book that will pro so no no book will will completely relate to your exact situation they're all, they are always have to be written for a general audience like principle based you are mr just in time learning as well which is mm. you'll you'll say right i've got this problem i'm going to go dive in try something up oh, i've hit a bottleneck right how do i solve that specific problem and then you go away and find like a piece of information that was curated for that specific problem. You put the piece of jigsaw in the puzzle and then you move on. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm like that. I think because you just ain't got no time for bullshits. Well, I just like, I can't, I think I just can't motivate myself. The, the idea of like reading. So that there's reading for pleasure, which is different. Like I, I can't understand that to to a degree. I don't do it personally, but I can't understand that. But like reading books that are like fairly dense in terms of information to learn something, unless the goal is to just learn things, I, d I just don't think I see what anybody really gets out of that process. Now, you're, well, we're both saying this from the privileged position of having read lots of books in the past and slowly mm. stopped that habit. And I think that's true because a lot of the the business world and the self-help world and all these kind of pockets of like the big waves of information that's coming out they all really relate to the same five or six concepts that are just being rehashed in many ways and each book in itself is one concept that's been padded out with anecdotes to 300 pages so once you've read enough of the books within a certain field you've pretty much got 90 percent of the ideas from that so i think for someone that's completely new to that world read three or four or five books like pick them really really well and then it's a case of like right how do i implement now yeah i'm trying to think of like where so let, let's say the average person listening to this they are they have between zero and ten online clients why would they read a book or like in what circumstances would reading a book be helpful? I think either you just want to learn generally more about business and you're not really attached to what specifically you learn, um, but you just think that you find business interesting and you want to kind of scratch that itch. You're, you're not going to come to any harm by like reading some of the top rated business books. But I think people often think that like, ah, uh, if only I read more than my business would be bigger or I would have, you know, I'd be growing faster and all that sort of stuff. And I think generally speaking, that's not true. Um, just because what most people need is something more bespoke and specific to them rather than like what someone wrote 10 years ago or five years ago. Yeah, that's a good point. The, like the gains are front loaded. So 
when mm-hmm. you have no mental models for business at all you read the e-myth and you read a couple of these things and they're going to be like really game changing for you but then after that it's like the next few books you read they're going to provide diminishing marginal returns until you're at the point where you're not implementing or if you do need information it's going to be to solve a very specific problem yeah so like when we answer questions from clients in the amazing coaching services that we <laughs> we deliver like how often when someone asks you a question do you answer it from a book you read never it's it's very rarely going to be like go and read that book mm. now that's partly because people who are in our amazing coaching program are at the point where they've they've got the they've got the wheels of the business turning already so they don't need like the absolute billy basics um because we cover the billy basics well there we go everything from the billy basics to the the tiny tweaks but yeah not all the padding and anecdotes and it was a hot sunday afternoon (laughs) in new york city central park i lowered my glasses and said to nigel (laughs) nigel's not a very new york name is it I think that's how the four-hour work week starts, you know. It's like a story like that. But I mean that, so that, there's an example of like a, we both read that. I assume you've read it. Have you read it? Yeah. What did you get out of that? Big, big shifts. Like changes, it changed the way that, um, I think that was the first book that introduced the concept of your hourly rate and outsourcing things that aren't part of that. But because now that's such common knowledge and so accepted it's not as game-changing a concept as it once was back then yeah like the idea that if you as an entrepreneur or a business owner charge your time out at 100 pounds an hour that you shouldn't be doing anything less than that or dealing with support queries if they're gonna cost you five or ten pounds an hour you should just get someone to do it for you it's a very like new age um or very like modern trendy way of looking like i you know, like conversations with my parents where they think, you know, like taking your car to a car wash is like lazy because you should wash your car because, you know, you value your car and it's hard work and, and that means something. And as soon as you start entertaining the idea of like, yeah, yeah, but like if I were to spend those those three hours on my business and be like, oh, like go over yourself kind of, you know, it's, it's a very like current generation millennial thing to worry about your hourly rate and outsourcing. Yeah, because it, it's like arbitraging your time to someone in the Philippines is not <laughs> it's, it's a, a very new thing. Yeah, it, it, compared to like, oh, you need to get some elbow grease and hard work ethic, <laughs> and clean the car, and go go and do a paper round, and and like, there's definitely value in that. Like, it you know it teaches people, like the whole the cliche of like, oh, it builds character. I think it definitely does. Mm. But so does hiring a VA in the Philippines. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, okay, so I think what most books have given us are as you say like a mental model or a framework to help make a decision it's like when you come up you come to some, you come to a point you think right i need to decide about this so we're trying to grow the business or improve the program or change this system or whatever um how can we approach that oh well this thing i read this one time it was a mental model that spoke about this or it was a concept or a framework that, that discussed that so i can make a decision with that framework but it's never like if you are running your five day challenge and it doesn't quite convert then here's a book about how to solve it you know that those but at least as far as i'm aware (laughs) they don't exist the parallel exists so much as with most things we talk about on this on this podcast with training so pts or coaches who are listening to this wouldn't tell their clients to read 50 books about training or to read, you know, 50 books a year about training that say there's probably one or two just to get yourself familiar with the the main concepts, the main mental models of progressive overload and calorie balance and exercise technique. But then beyond that, you've just got to go and implement. And then if you run into a problem, the problem's probably going to be quite specific and may not have a, you know, if you, if you plateau with your squat, you're not going to be like, I'm going to go and buy a book on, how to fix my squat plateau i'll hire a coach or just 
change my program and get them to to help with that specific tweak i can remember reading i remember buying a dvd which was uh i can't even remember what it was called but it was mike um to share like reactive training systems his first publication so it was a tiny a thin little book plain black and white text and a set of dvds in a dvd case and i remember sitting on the sofa with a notepad trying to understand it and thinking bloody hell like this is legitimately like really complicated to understand and to him it all just makes sense um so like there's an example of a book that's probably one of the in terms of the thought put into it and the work put into it one of the best books about training you could possibly read but for someone who squats 100 kilos total total overkill I and i think any less from mike to share a bit no yeah yeah, yeah. The, it's a to put out a masterpiece <laughs> <laughs> this, this, you're right this is exactly the issue like people thinking they're more advanced than they are and picking up the wrong book for the wrong problem squatting 100 kilos and trying to increase it to 120 needs no reading it needs more time under the bar equally and this is like the potentially how to annoy a lot of people root of this conversation like reading a book about like reading mark manson's latest book isn't going to help really with anything <laughs> From from a from a business perspective, <laughs> from a from a business perspective, you know, like you see, like people on Instagram sharing the latest book they've read, um, as though that means now that their like their revenue is going to increase because they've read the book, and it's this. But people think the same with like meditating or waking up early to work or working from a coffee shop. You know, there's all these kind of badges that people put on their social media that that implies that because i am doing these five behaviors was actually like the the behavior that no one really wants to face face come face to face with is like looking and dealing with one incredibly boring problem for two weeks it's a good point <laughs> and just and doing that all of the books on meditation that i've read apart from say the first one to you know to learn how to do it I wish I'd spent just meditating. <laughs> so, you know, something I think about nearly every day when I when I sit to meditate. So, like, I think everyone will have had this. If you've been meditating for a while, you sit to meditate and you think, oh, I could try, like, Sam Harris's latest thing. Or I could, like, go and do a Tar Brock guided meditation. And I remember you telling me about the experience you had at the retreat where people would, like, go up to the teacher with all their little stories and they just you just tell them every time just focus on the end of your nose focus on the sensation <laughs> at the tip of the nostrils and he would just say that for anyone with it I'm going to be like takes the attention back to the sensation at the, and you look at him and you're like this guy knows what he's talking about like why am I coming up with a smart idea of my own when actually that's what I need to be doing well, because what that guy has is thousands of hours of experience. Of focusing on... <laughs> yeah. So, like, he's been there, done that, got the robe, and knows that the answer is... He's a, he's a like, a deadlift specialist. He's not program-hopped at all. He's just done the... Uh, what, what's that? Um, dead, the 10-week deadlift cycle. It's like a double-barreled name. Completely forgotten. Uh, Cone Filippi. Cohen Philippi, he's just done that back to back for <laughs> Ed Cohen's Deadlift program. Yeah. <laughs> so just yeah. There's a really good podcast. Well, no, it's it's not a really good podcast actually. Like I'm gonna retract that. It's a really good concept for a podcast, but it's executed terribly. Um, which is where these two these two women read a book every month or every fortnight and they just do everything in it. And so, <laughs> So they just like they plow into it and then they they do how it's changed their life, and, which is fantastic because that's like single focus, implementing what they're reading and then moving on. Unfortunately, the execution is terrible. And I think if anyone's out there and wanting to start a podcast, there's a free business idea. Great idea. Do it well, and you'll do it. It's hard. It's hard to document the because because the the like the funny nuance in that is the weird shit that ends up happening as a result of uh, well the guy who was on the i 
think he was on the Sam Harris podcast who <laughs> he did it with the Old Testament. Oh my God. <laughs> He had to stone adulterers and homosexuals um, in the street, and he wasn't allowed to like cut his beard, and he had to like sacrifice a goat, and he had to do all these like Old Testament things for a year. You just run the ri- like he must have spent a couple of nights in a cell, mustn't he? <laughs> he said like he, had to, he paid lip service to it, so he didn't stone them with big, you just like little stones, and just like ah oh, okay. Um, but yeah, he uh, he also did one for a year where he read an encyclopedia. So like, he worked out it would need like seven hours of reading per day for a year to read a certain type of encyclopedia. And uh, he did it. He said he accumulated loads of quite fruitless knowledge, and really annoyed his wife. Because so like, that's that's like the you know. end game. Sorry. <laughs> he'd be sat there with his wife, and he'd be like. The catacombs of Egypt were first <laughs> discovered by Ronald St. Mart in 1922. And later, he died of polio. And she'd be like, all right, mate, like... It'd be, so that's that stuff to put in Evernote, isn't it? Yeah. Because then, the, the well, no. Because it's the one time when you sat in, like, Weatherspoons in a quiz in seven years' time and you just happened to have your laptop. Come on, Jay. You know that it's in there because you've you just got a, a searchable, terms, Egypt, yeah, polio. searchable, exactly. Brilliant. But that's the end, like taken to the re- extreme of reading, isn't it? Because if you're not careful, so like, how, let's say a three hundred page book, how long would that take you to read? Would you say? Mostly audio now, so it would take a week or ten days. Okay, so okay, so let's say so ten days. So you're gonna do. Three of them a month. If That's you pick if the like full, if have, full pelt, yeah. yeah. If you pick the wrong ones, what like how, where's the filter of like I'm not going to do that. That was stupid. So so yeah, this is a great point, and I, I mentioned this in the video, which is um, people have a, a tendency <clears throat> to like of some cost. Like they're reading a book and they're like, well, I've got to finish it now because I've well, I've got the book. And mm. sometimes you you know that it's terrible. You you're two hundred pages in, like you know that you're not going to get any more value out of it. But you you think, well, I've got to finish it. And then you end up like crippling your whole reading habit because you picked up a crap book and you feel like you've got to finish it and you can't motivate yourself to do it. And it, yeah, God, I this. I mean, there's so many books that I've that I've read because of just that. Same, and it's terrible because you look back and you're like, why did I pursue that? Uh, are there any Are there any books that you've read? I know this is a hard question because I think the answer is they they like incrementally gain over time but is there anything that you've read in your entire life that you like on a weekly basis still use what you learned don't say your medical degree (laughs) Kumar and Clark's principles of clinical (laughs) Um, the way of the superior man by David Dada that's changed the course of my life anything else I'll have to open up the index there's, there's definitely many that I think it's 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 probably the same for both of us. Was that I think David Dada's book is like a we've spoken about this before. It's like a, a way of operating. It's like yeah. a, a set of principles that you can like apply to lots of different situations. So I I arguably getting things done, arguably deep work, arguably oh, yeah. atomic habits, things like that. Massively. But there's not a single business book aside. From, so that some of like Russell Brunson's books were really good for us to read at certain times because it was like a way of looking at online marketing. Do you know what? I'm just looking back at some of the books that I've read and actually, I don't want to do a big U-turn on this. If we come full circle. But like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, simple concept. And a, you know now seems like a very basic thing that you should be incre- you should be building net investable income and producing assets that cover your liabilities. But for most people, that's not a common... So that's a, that's a mental model, or that's it's a, a framework model. to make decisions with, yeah. Yeah, uh, trading in the zone, um, detaching your uh, emotions from trading. Letting winners run and cutting losers early. Yeah, all the very of. useful uh, mental models. Obviously, yeah, as you said, atomic habits and deep work, digital minimalism. So all of these things probably like blend into, like, when you and I face a situation, we arrive at a decision from all of these different things that we've read. 
But I, so I think like you gain from having a reading habit, but I don't think that's not the sexy answer of like, I read the latest book and suddenly, you know, like you didn't read Rich Dad Poor Dad and then suddenly have rental properties. You didn't read Trading in the Zone and then suddenly become a profitable trader. There's still, yeah. it's like, <laughs> go on. Yeah, you, you, you don't suddenly do it, but like you've got two options. You either read the book, finish it, you think that was nice, move on to the next one, do the next one. <clears throat> or read the book and you spend three months or six months deep in the hole with just that concept. And then you become an absolute terminator of a trader. And then you've got that skill for life. Or you, you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad and you like shift your, your financial um, direction into that thing and then that's set you for life. And so... And then the book you'd end up reading is uh, so let's say you do six months where you just implement trading in the zone or a similar book you spend six months implementing that and then the book you read is like i've found the following problem i'm looking for the best solution to that problem I, and you end up reading this like weird like pdf download you, you know you, you end up like way off the deep end in these in this stuff and that's like i suppose where where we are at now the people we listen to the problems we try and solve the like stuff we end up trying to have inter to have told Johnny and Yusuf back in 2015, like this will be the thing you're obsessed with, would just make zero sense. Yeah, it's the reactive okay. training systems manual to the person who's just done push pull legs for the first time. Because if you read another one of the general general audience business books, you're gonna it's gonna have so much overlap. With, there might be one or two new concepts. I'm not saying there isn't, but it'll be so much overlap with stuff that you know that's not a good use of your time compared to, as you said, hiring the the expert sniper to come in and go. That's yeah, what I need. Th just think at how how quickly things are solved when you just hire someone. Like all the people we've hired over the years, when you like, but it all happened because it's like head off a wall for like three months trying to get something to work, and then you hire someone and they look at it and they go, "Oh, it's just this," and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just because when you look at like a thousand, you look at something or a style of thing. A thousand times. There's a, so there's a coach we've got at the moment who, like, I've looked at Ads Manager a lot in my life, <laughs> and I like you feel like you quite get quite good at picking up the patterns and things. And I will look at something and I'll plug all the numbers into things and I'll come out with a conclusion. And I'm like, I think it's this that we need to change. And then I show the coach we're working with, and he goes, Oh no, it's the other thing. And then he just runs me through the maths of why. I'm just like. Because in, in that in that scenario, that's an ex this is another example about like why it can, this stuff can be dangerous. Because left to my own devices, I would have spent six months optimizing something that was not the problem, there or trying go. to fix something that was not the problem. So you've bought time from someone who sees more than you do. And so, well, yeah. So like, you read the wrong book, and then potentially there's a year of your life. <laughs> Sends you off course. Like doing something that would never have worked anyway. Well, there we go. We are overrunning into the next podcast with Oliver Anwar, who was on Bless this you. podcast, and now we are coming on to his. So listen to that for some lovely cross-fertilization goodness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do we get on? We've got to get on Zoom. Oh, we've got a link. Oh, God. Right, we are actually legitimately late. Right. Cool. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.